To get rid of malaria, it is not enough to kill the Anopheles mosquito. You must wipe out the source. You must get rid of the swamps, the breeding places. I'm sure that you members of the voluntary welfare agencies in our city know that poverty has its similarity. The problem requires us to go to the source. We must get rid of the slum, improve education, clean up the breeding places of despair and deprivation, eliminate the swamps of life, and in their place, see that gardens grow where all may enjoy the fruits of their labor. We certainly were fortunate to have Sister Marietta as our guest speaker today. There are few people in our community in any profession as well qualified to speak on this subject. Sister, your students at St. Mary's are indeed fortunate. Thank you. <laughs> that concludes our meeting. See you all next month. Mrs. Parker. Sister. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you. This was a very receptive group. You were wonderful. Basking in the uh, adoration of your public? Um, Sister, this is Mr. Hardy, head of community counselors for justice. How do you do? Save it. I didn't come up to tell you how great you were. Mr. Hardy doesn't really approve of our council, and he's rather short on courtesy. Well, at least I didn't sell out to the power structure. The last meeting, he addressed me as Aunt Jemima because I spoke against the concept of black power. You negotiate from a position of strength, Mrs. Parker, not politeness. Mr. Hardy sees two ways to accomplish his objectives his way and the wrong way. Well, progress is like a bayonet. You need to have guts at both ends. If it's all the same to you, Mr. Hardy, I'll fight for progress without bloodshed. It took civil war to get the Emancipation Proclamation, and they are still rioting to have it enforced. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my, my. You're a pretty rough character. Well, it's a pretty rough world. And I thought you should take a good look at it. What are you celebrating? National Hate Week? Well, I thought somebody should give you a small piece of the truth before you go back to your cocoon all smug and satisfied. Who sponsors your organization, Mr. Hardy? Private funds. Private funds, sister. Not communist, if that's what's on your mind. No, no, no. That's not what's on my mind. You know... You're a phony. A 24-karat, gold-filled, genuine leather phony. Who appointed you judge? Well, I have the right. You were the speaker and I was the audience. Oh, you were quite eloquent. Very impressive. But then so is a church bell and all it does is ring. Well, at least we have something in common. You're pretty loud yourself. Now, would you please tell me what it is you want? I want to know who told you you were an expert on poverty. Oh, when you, when you put on that mouseketeer outfit, you renounced the world, and you did a damn good job. You don't know a thing about it. Uh, Mr. Hardy, excuse me, but you don't renounce the people or the problems of the world with this habit, only its distractions. Now, I teach uh, sociology, Oh, and yes, I... I know, and you went to fashionable girls' high school and a girls' college, spent your summers at the beaches in the mountains. <laughs> You're a fortune teller. You know, I don't think you've been closer to poor people than a Thanksgiving basket. If I were a man, I'd belt you one. Well, if you were a man, I don't think you'd know how. Anyway, I thought you were supposed to be nonviolent. Isn't that what you teach your sociology classes? Well, I'm sick of people who fight injustices with words and promises, theories and ideas, and never do a damn thing more. Like what, for example? Well, like you were the one who said it was essential that we wipe out the source in breeding places of despair and deprivation. Yes. Well, how about getting out in that swamp with some of those mosquitoes and stepping on those eggs with your own bare feet? I'm training my students to do that very thing. And I'm told I do my work fairly well. No, so God's work, you mean. Well, I'm interested in people's work. Well, I was taught that they're one and the same. Oh, I know what you were taught. All that pap about love thy neighbor and do unto others. Well, get your nose out of your soft book, sister, and go take a good look at your neighbor. My work is teaching. Oh, that's theory, words, ivory tower stuff. What are you doing for people? Well, now, for somebody who's supposed to be living in poverty, you look like you're pretty damn good shape. You know, a Buddhist monk 
soaks himself in gasoline and burns up. At least he's doing something. Is that the sort of action you recommend? Well, didn't Christ sacrifice himself? You know, of all the religions I've studied, Christ seems to have put it on the line where it counts. But the trouble with you so-called Christians is that you don't buy his teachings. Do you? A hell of a lot more than you think. I believe that all men are my brothers. And I believe in helping them and not just talking about it. What exactly do you do? Oh, this might come as a surprise to you, but I live with the poor. I work for them. I help them get a fair shake. That's my card. It's my office. I'm there most every day. Come and visit me. If your dainty nose can stand the stench of poverty and you're not afraid to get your nun suit dirty. Community counseling for justice. Very impressive. See how the other half lives. Maybe you'll get some ideas for a new speech. I already have. It'll be on courtesy. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Come in. I wondered who was marching on my ceiling. I'm sorry, sister. I didn't mean to disturb you, but... Well, I... I haven't been able to get any sleep. I met a young man today. Oh, no, nothing like that at all. He was a young... social worker, I guess you'd call him. A Mr. Al Hardy. Well, he called me a... A phony. He didn't believe you were a nun? He believed that, but I don't think he believed that I was a Christian. He said I wasn't involved. Involved in what? His kind of involvement. An organization called the Community Counseling for Justice. That's a commendable name. But the point is, he acted as if I wasn't doing my job. That he was doing it for me. That my knowledge of, of poverty was second-hand. Intellectual. Maybe it's true. Sister, should a teacher run to the supermarket and add up her pupil's bill for him? Or teach him mathematics? I know, sister, I know, but in one way he was right. I don't know that world out there. It might as well be Hong Kong or Nepal. Oh, it's late, sister. You're tired. I'm tired. Somehow I feel I've lost a sense of direction. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Now I suggest you get some sleep. And in charity, let me get some. You know him. He, he means well, but he kept putting it off, and then nothing happened. Uh, excuse me for a second. Come in, please. The doors are open. Excuse me for a second, Mrs. Foley. Well, well, well. It's a day of miracles. Let's get something straight, Mr. Hardy. I didn't come down here to take any abuse. Well, you're in time to see some of my people. That's, uh, that's Mrs. Foley over there. Her husband's an alcoholic and hasn't had work in months. She has three children at home that haven't eaten since yesterday. And, oh, don't let the name fool you. She's Jewish. Her husband's a Catholic when he's conscious. Come in. Uh, Mrs. Foley, this is Sister Marietta. Mister. Mrs. Foley, would you mind if Sister Marietta joined us? No, no, of course not. The, uh, how are the kids getting along? Are you making it all right with the welfare checks? Well, we were, but then Dan got a hold of one of the checks, and you know where it went. Mr. Hardy, could you let us have five dollars until Monday? Sister, what would you tell your sociology classes to do in this case? 
Uh, Mrs. Foley, does your husband have any relatives who could help? Well, they're Catholics. We're dead to them. They were against the marriage from the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, my family is just as bad. We just don't exist for them. But you, you knew this before you got married, didn't you? Well, yes, but we were young. And when you're young, you think that all that matters is love. In the beginning, it was all right, but then Julie was born and Dan... Dan was out of work and uh, there wasn't anyone to turn to. You see, that's, that's the difference. What is? Well, most people have someone that they can turn to. If you don't, you just can't make it. Uh, how's little David? Oh, well, he's just about the same. I I'm really very anxious to get back to him. Uh, Mr. Hardy, b before I leave, what time is the march tomorrow? Well, it's scheduled for noon, but I'd like you to be there by 11.45. Excuse me, what march is this? Well, you see, I have a bunch of these organizations, and we've scheduled a march to protest the lack of action from Mr. Sweeney. Now, he's our esteemed commissioner of welfare. It's a little surprise party planned for the noon hour. They'll tie things up like mad. Do you have a permit? Permit? Are you kidding? I need a busing of the power structure for that. Well, besides being thrown in jail, what'll it get you? Well, I've been there before. And that's not bad. It's publicity, TV coverage, newspapers. Maybe somebody up high will ask some questions. Maybe the people will get curious. The people? The people, yes. You know, the ones that vote. This is still a democracy, isn't it? And it has laws to protect the rights of all people. Oh, yes, but the poor don't need protection. They need exposure. They need to learn to care, laws or no laws. Worthy objectives, no matter how noble, do not justify illegal means. Ah, uh, yes, you can have that engraved in marble. The ends do not justify the means. Listen, they're not interested in the ends. They want a beginning. How can you possibly believe that you're helping anyone by, by breaking the law? Sister, in those books of yours, didn't you ever read about all that tea they dumped in Boston Harbor? M Mr. Hardy, I I'm, I'm really very sorry, Mrs. Foley. All right. Well, here's five dollars. Uh, that's all I can give you. I'm very short this week. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, sister, why don't you go along with Mrs. Foley and give her a hand with her children? Oh, no, no. It's all right, really. I don't need any Mrs. help. Mrs. Foley, I'm... I would be very glad to, if you don't mind. Mind? Oh, no, no. I'd be glad to have somebody to talk to. Good, good. I'll see you later, Mr. Hardy. Sister. Julie! Julie, honey, it's Mama. Honey, how, how is David feeling? Oh, he's about the same. You'd better take a walk. Yeah, excuse me, sister. Sure. My name is Sister Marietta. Would you like some lunch? Oh, I can do it. What do you have? Um, milk, and bologna, and some soup. How about making some sandwiches? Okay. Are you a Catholic? Well, yes. Have you known Mother Long? No, no, I just met her today. That's pretty good. Well, what? Being a Catholic, I mean. Well, why do you say that? Well, I think it's pretty good being anything. But see, we were never anything. Daddy's Catholic and Mama's Jewish. Well, didn't you ever go to church? Well, once or twice, Daddy took us to church, but he never said anything. And then when we asked Mother, she never said anything either, so then we didn't go anymore. Well, where's your daddy now? Oh, he's asleep. He works hard all night and sleeps in the day. He's burning up. Mrs. Foley, I think we'd better send for a doctor. No. What's this? What, what is this on his arm? He got hit by a rat. When? Mrs. Foley! A couple of weeks ago. Mrs. Foley, we've got to get David to the hospital right away. Please, please. I'm going to when do we get some word? The doctor said he'd call as soon as the lab report came through. 
Who's responsible for those rat-infested tenements? Somebody's got to be responsible. Are you putting rats in place of mosquitoes in your next lecture? Oh, but... Well, now, you were the one that said we had to get at the source. Wipe out the breeding place. Yes, I said it, and it still goes. Well, then help us give Commissioner Sweeney the works tomorrow. Listen, if we could get him off his complacent desk, maybe we could wipe out the rats and the filth and the late garbage collection and all those things that you all take for granted. I'm sorry, but... But I can't do it. Still afraid to get your nun suit dirty? You know, it seems to me I remember a story about Jesus and the lepers. But you just don't understand. No, unfortunately, I do. You know, for a brief moment, I thought you were getting religion. When you asked me who was responsible, well, you are responsible, and I am. The whole world is. Everybody is responsible for everybody else. And the ones that are hurting worse should get help first. Now, I have to apologize to you, sister. I called you a phony. But you're worse than that. You're a hypocrite. You're as much a public menace as Commissioner Sweeney. Only at least he's obvious. Now, maybe you better go before I lose my courtesy. Rabies. The report came in rabies. Sister, if you could have seen that child, half starved, to allow such poverty in a country that's this rich, such squalor, that a child could be bitten by a, a diseased rat. You acted quickly and wisely. But if I'd acted sooner, if we all had, it wouldn't have happened. And the ills of the world aren't your exclusive responsibility, sister. But they are. Forgive me, sister, but they are. I have enough to eat. I have a roof over my head and I, and I have security. I took a vow of poverty. And yet I have just seen poverty for the first time. How could I vow something I don't understand? Our vows aren't negative. They're to give us freedom to serve others. To serve, to serve. I've just been serving my own pride. I was afraid to, to join a march of people trying to do something about injustice because, because it would have compromised my dignity, my image as a nun, of what people expect of a nun. Well, freedom also carries the duty to act responsibly. Well, if living the gospel means anything at all, it means being involved. I'm not involved with life, with, with suffering. No. I sleep in a, in a comfortable convent and teach in a comfortable classroom, protected from the sight of, of half the world hanging on a cross outside. Don't underestimate what you're doing. It's important. Teaching takes a very special talent. You do it well. I don't... Hello? Yes, she's here. It's for you, sister. Oh, yes, this is Sister Marietta. Oh, yes, doctor. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, yes, doctor, I'm all right. Thank you. What is it? Artie said I was responsible. That we were all responsible. He was right. We killed him. Who? David. David Foley. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> Please, sister, calm down. Commissioner, I'm not asking you to halt the processes of government. I'm telling you to put them in motion. A municipality is a very complex thing, sister. We have sanitation, lighting, utilities, schools, police, parks, fire. You have to balance, give and take. Don't recite for me, Commissioner. I'm not giving you an examination. <laughs> Do you realize what you are asking? Yes. 
Exactly what you're paid to do. Only no one should have to ask you. This is the function of your department. I appreciate your concern. I sympathize with your position. But I don't need you to tell me what my function is. Oh, don't you? Well, what are you waiting for? A, a plague? Oh, now, don't start exaggerating. One rat is not a plague. How can you exaggerate the death of a child? Sister, I don't know how much you know about Hardy and his gang, but you're mixing with a pretty bad bunch. People with jail sentences, pinko attitudes. They're a dangerous group for a sister of the Catholic Church to get involved with. Mr. Hardy's attitudes are not at issue. The facts speak for themselves. The child's death is an indisputable fact. The health department will find rabies indisputable. I understand the health problem. I sympathize with the child's loss. I'm a good Christian sister. After all, I am on the committee for your school's new laboratory. And what bearing does that have on this case? I don't think your superiors are going to be particularly happy about your involvement. Are you threatening me, Commissioner? Just the facts of life. Politics is a little out of your line. You mess with the machinery of government. Be prepared to get mangled. But law isn't out of my line. Nor is human dignity. I'd just like to remind you, Commissioner, that your department has a budget allocation in excess of one million dollars. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to tell you that I've studied this report very carefully. It's part of the course I teach. Oh. Your expenditures are specifically spelled out in the, in the area of neighborhood service. I refer you to sections G and H, subdivisions 1, 2, and 3 of both sections. It doesn't take a great knowledge of law to read your administering of the budget as a misappropriation of funds. If you're going to play the game that way, I suggest you get legal counsel first. That's if your superiors let you. Oh, I did already. The city's legal counsel was glad to oblige. And speaking of politics, remember, he's a member of the other party. I suggest you lower your voice. There are reporters in the corridors, and I wouldn't want you to get embarrassed. The reporters are your problem. There's a group marching here tomorrow, Commissioner, to protest what they consider your betrayal of the people's trust. <laughs> <laughs> and you can expect to see me in front of that group. And I would suggest that you take down that portrait of Lincoln and put up something that's more appropriate. Perhaps Judas. Well, I'm sure glad the phone stopped ringing. I guess I was a bit loud at the commissioners yesterday. <laughs> that's a beautiful understatement. Boy, those newspaper headlines. None to lead protest march. I just wish it hadn't hit the papers. You gonna get in trouble? I might. What can happen? Oh, a nice quiet convent in the country with a few years to think things over. There's no sense worrying about it now. I've committed myself and I wouldn't want it any other way. I still say you did one hell of a job on Commissioner Sweeney. Boy, that, that newspaper reporter must have had his ear glued to the keyhole. Was that Judas' remark on the level? I'm afraid so. I shouldn't have. It wasn't a very charitable remark. It was... It was lacking in courtesy, if you ask me. <laughs> Come in. The door's open. Well, sister? I don't quite know what to say. Oh, well, that's a refreshing change. You've seen the newspaper. Yes. You were remarkably vocal here. It was brought to me by someone who also came to cancel his pledge for the new school laboratory. Sister, I'm I so might as well fill you in. There were 16 pledges canceled before I left, not to mention the phone calls. Sister, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. I didn't mean to get the school involved. Didn't you know the moment you came down here you'd get the school involved? Now, listen, it's not really all her fault. I goaded her on. I, I know your part in this, Mr. Hardy. He has no responsibility for my actions. Responsibility? Responsibility. Oh, that's a word that's been bandied about an awful lot these past few days. Now, let me give you some facts. Besides the council pledges, two of the board of trustees have resigned. 
The newspapers, TV, and radio have been parking outside our convent door. When I left, the place looked like a carnival. Well, I can use the publicity. You can. We can't. Commissioner Sweeney came to see me to give me a first-hand account of your activities, your associations, and your conduct. I didn't realize it would go this far. The commissioner also said something about going to see the bishop. Well, I guess that about does it. Well, sister, everybody's not built to fight City Hall. I suppose not. But anyway, I have a present for you. I was saving it as a surprise. A present? Here's a, a permit for your march. I asked the city attorney to get it for me. At least now you're within the law. Well, if you'll excuse me, sister and I will be going. That seems wise. Wise or cautious? Well, sometimes they can be the same thing. And sometimes they can be quite different. If I had my choice, I know where I'd be. But well, no one has restricted you, sister. As your superior, I suppose I could, and I'm sure you'd obey. But as one human being to another, I can't, in conscience, impose my point of view on you. But what would happen if all nuns did But, sister, this? I'm not all nuns. I'm me, and I think... I think that's just the point. I have a conscience of my own. I'm not restricting you, sister. The decision is yours. Then, sister, I'll see you after the march. Well, I'd better get back to the school and figure out how to hold the lions at night. I wonder if we have enough time to make a sign that reads, Down with Judas. I think that would fit my image. Yeah. Permit. Wow. There are only two types of people, Pascal said. Those who have found God and those who are looking for him. Most of us fall into the latter category. We know we need God. We know we can't be happy apart from him if we don't know how to find him. Some people seek God in solitude. They withdraw from the world and its problems in order to enter the inner world of the spirit in the hope of communing with God there. Other people do just the opposite. They immerse themselves in the pains and problems of their fellow human beings. Through the unselfish service of man, they hope to contact God. We all need God, but each of us has to find his own way of approaching him. For you, is it withdrawal into solitude or immersion in service? or perhaps a combination of the two. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.